Um, good afternoon, and thank you all for, for joining us. Uh, with me today are uh, uh, two gentlemen who probably need no introduction to San Diegans, but I will introduce them in a second anyway, and I'm glad they're here. It's uh, Bob McElroy, who is president and CEO of the Alpha Project, as well as uh, Deacon Jim Vargas, who is uh, president and CEO of Father Joe's Villages. Um, first and foremost, to all San Diegans who are watching, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Um, we've said at the very beginning that April was going to be a very critical month. We're almost halfway through the month. And as we see these signs of hope, as we see that curve beginning to flatten, it's because of your efforts. It's because you have followed all of the stay-at-home orders. Um, it's because you're doing all of the social distancing that is incredibly important. We took some pretty bold and dramatic steps in San Diego early on. And I think those are starting to pay the dividends that we hoped that they would. Um, but it's because of your efforts. So, so thank you. Keep it up. As I said before, April is that critical month to get us to where we, we want to be. Um, and we know it's not easy. Uh, we know particularly if you've been at home and kids home at school, um, all of the changes in all of our lives, um, you're making a huge sacrifice. You're sacrificing to keep people safe, to keep our hospitals safe, to keep our first responders safe. Uh, so thank you for what you're doing. Um, as we continue to do the right things, um, keeping that up, as I talked about yesterday, not getting complacent is going to allow us to get on the other side of this curve sooner rather than later. Um, and keeping people safe will continue to be our number one priority. Uh, a couple of updates today that I want to cover. First, we're going to talk about the next phase of Operation Shelter to Home, which started over the weekend at the San Diego Convention Center. Um, next, I'm going to talk about some steps that we are taking that I'm advocating for for our local economy. And finally, of course, highlighting a San Diegan that continues to step up. Um, but first, our, the work that's happening at the Convention Center. Um, last week, as you know, we completed our first phase of Operation Shelter to Home, which was moving folks from our shelters into the Convention Center. Um, as you know, with over 800 folks in our bridge shelters alone, the need for that physical space, that social distancing, that you couldn't get in the bridge shelters because we had uh, bunk beds because of the close proximity. Life-saving work that was happening there, but it did not offer the space that we needed. And so that phase with Alpha Project, Father Joe's Villages, um, VVSD, Veterans Villages, to move everybody, uh, all of the help, all of the volunteers, phase one was incredibly important. As then I said, phase two started over the weekend, um, which is now that we are taking that outreach effort directly to folks who are still on the streets. Uh, people that need that help and the support, and maybe people that sometime had been resistant to some of that help and the support. But because we've seen some of those other resources dry up, um, having that convention center open, having those teams out there saying we have a place for you, a clean, safe place where you can come in, get food, get meals, showers, get the resource you need to get back on your feet, that convention center beacon is more important now than ever particularly for folks that are unsheltered. Um, we have our cross-agency outreach teams that are out there now every single day um, with one goal, encouraging people to come inside. It's not safe. It's unsanitary to be living out in some of the conditions out on the streets. We have a better choice and a better solution to you. Um, and I can't say enough about the outreach teams of all of the providers that are out there because they're working not only for the convention center, uh, those folks that qualify at the motels, addiction programs, substance abuse efforts, others, it is an all-hands-on-deck effort, an all-hands-on-deck effort, because we need to. Um, with one goal, how do we get as many people off the streets and into that convention center? Um, as you know, we have space for 1,500 people. We want to make sure that we give that opportunity for all San Diegans that need it. Um, a quick word on the medical precautions that are happening there, because it's incredibly important. Everybody who comes into the convention center, everybody is screened for any illness. Our county public health nurses are there, our public health professionals every single day, and they're doing a remarkable job. Daily temperature checks uh, and verbal questionnaires of everyone. 
again, that very high standards to protect the health and welfare of the clients that are in the convention center, as well as our folks and our responders that are out there and all of our providers. Anyone with symptoms is evaluated and potentially transferred to isolation or an off-site medical facility. A couple of quick numbers that I think are important. Um, 68 folks between Friday and Monday uh, were brought in uh, by our outreach teams, our police department's homeless outreach team working hand in hand together. We had 21 folks brought inside today alone from those coordinated outreach efforts. As I mentioned earlier, our goal is to get 1,500 folks being to help to be not only sheltered at the convention center, but all of the work that's helping to get them back on their feet and into that permanent supportive housing uh, of their own. And if you have the opportunity, um, and we'll show it at some point, just the tremendous teamwork that is happening uh, at that convention center right now. So I want to thank Bob, all of you at Alpha Project, Deacon, all of you at Father Joe's Villages. The work that went in to move everybody was significant. It was substantial. It really represented the best of our city really coming together for all of the right reasons. Um, and you see it. You see it on the clients that are inside that have that place now. I want to thank our city teams, our park and rec folks that are helping, libraries, lifeguards, uh, everybody who's been volunteering to, to help out. We've had about 40 different city employees who have been there helping out on Operation uh, Shelter to Home. I want to thank our Housing Commission, Regional Task Force uh, for the Homeless, and of course our county partners and all the staff at the Convention Center who realized the need and jumped in with both feet from, from day one. Um, this is incredibly important for this very vulnerable population, many of whom has underlying health conditions. To provide that safe, clean space that helps them get back on their feet, as I said. So now I'd like to introduce uh, two folks who have really been drivers at this, really setting the standard for San Diego and I think the rest of the state. Uh, first and foremost is uh, Bob McElroy, our Alpha Project President and CEO. Bob? Thanks, Mayor Kevin. Um, I think we've been there two weeks, but it seems like we've been there two years. Uh, everybody's settled in now. Um, we've got all the infrastructure in there, all of our nurses and clinicians, uh, all of our support staff, our housing navigators. We've actually found uh, five people uh, housing, permanent housing, since we've been there the last week and a half, two weeks. Uh, we just mobilized our outreach teams today. Uh, as Kevin said, we uh, are bringing people in on a daily basis now. We're going out to where they are. Uh, folks that we've known for a long, long time, we've kind of kept, uh, kept our eye on communication with them uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, and we're going to go out, we're out and getting them. Uh, we have, uh, I think, about 80 folks that are in, that have been quarantined for two weeks. Uh, we're going to bring those, some from uh, Father Joe's, some from VVSD, and certainly from Alpha Project. We're going to uh, bring those folks back in. But now's the time. I think all the infrastructure's there. We're going to start doing testing. Uh, we're going to open, open up the doors to the folks that really want to come inside. Uh, it has been a, a challenge for many folks. Uh, we have a lot of churches that have been out there helping people, and they don't want to do. And they want to come in inside and help. We can't. They can't at this point in time. But the city staff, the county staff, have been outstanding. Our lifeguards are in there making announcements every day. I think we had Parks and Rec in there today, helping our folks clean the uh, clean the facility. So it's really been a, an entire community effort, and uh, we're just so grateful uh, to see people turn out and help other folks. So. We will get there. We'll get through this thing together. Amen. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, and next up, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Father Joe's Village's president and CEO, um, uh, Deacon Jim. Deacon, come on up. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you for your efforts. And I want to start actually by reinforcing what the mayor was saying. It's absolutely critical that we continue to take people off the streets. That's going to make all the difference in the world in, re in reducing the risk of contagion, not only amongst those who are on the streets, but in the general population. So it's absolutely critical that we continue to do this. And as the mayor says, we've been reducing the density in our current shelter in order to provide the spacing that's necessary, that's distancing that's necessary to keep them healthy. And that has allowed us also then to be bringing people within, uh, into the convention center itself. Today, between those, the intakes that we had into the convention center and also into our Paul Mirabile Center on our campus, we were able to take 30 individuals off the streets. These are 30 
separate individuals and, and different individuals than in the prior days. And we go out each and every single day in these outreach efforts. So that our Paul Mirable Center, as have, has been mentioned before, we, there we have 175 beds, and those beds are dedicated to at-risk individuals, individuals who are older, who have pre-existing conditions, who have chronic conditions, right? It's extremely important that we bring them in out of the streets and that we put them in a place where they especially have additional health um, screening. So we have our, our medical clinic right there on site. In fact, it's just one level down. So they're continually being monitored should any symptoms arise and then appropriate action is taken. So between those who we were able to take off the streets into that facility and also the beds here that we have in the convention center, today alone we were able to bring 30 additional people off the streets. And that's extremely important because on the streets there isn't the social distancing. On the streets there isn't the proper hygiene. Right? And, and there isn't even the dignity. I mean, people have to go and do the, when, when they have to go to the restroom, as an example. Sometimes they can't find the restrooms, and they have the indignity of having to use the streets right in a corner. So here, they're able to be in a place where there are showers, where they can launder their, their, their clothes, where they can go to the restroom, where they can feel safe. That's another aspect of it, where they can feel safe. And then, most importantly, we can be able to work with them have case managers start working with them, provide the services that they need in order to keep them off the streets on a permanent basis, in order to be able to move them then into permanent dwellings. And that, at the end of the day, is what it's all about. So I want to thank the mayor, and I want to thank um, the, C the City Housing Commission, the RTFH, the county. So many people have come together to collaborate. It's making a difference. It's making a difference not only within our own population, those who we serve who are, who are unsheltered and, and are homeless, but also in, in, in the community at large. God bless you. Um, thank you, Deacon, and, and thank you, Bob. Um, th th there's a reason why San Diego County was one of the, the few counties where homelessness went down last year. Um, it's because of the concerted, coordinated effort that we've had and the resources to bear, keeping in mind that these are our neighbors. These are our families. These are people that need help. And so to provide these services in the coordinated fashion that you're doing represents the best of that. And so we need you. Um, keep it up. I'll be out there tomorrow, as you know, for a, uh, for a couple hours, uh, checking in on our exit strategies, um, how we're moving folks into that permanent supportive housing. So I'll uh, be able to give some more updates on that in the coming, uh, coming days and weeks. Uh, next topic that I want to focus on in, on today's uh, briefing. Uh, is the importance of taking the steps uh, that we need to, to uh, open our economy, to keep our economy as healthy as we can. The governor, of course, talked about that uh, earlier today. Um, and while we don't know uh, exactly when things will get back to, quote, uh, normal, we have to start planning for it now. I have begun assembling a group of business and civic leaders uh, really to help plan for a phased reopening of our economy. And the goal is to have a very coordinated, very phased approach in absolute uh, coordination and communication with our public health officials. I think it's important that we do it regionally. Um, that's one of the things that I have stressed to my fellow elected officials, uh, my colleagues at the county as well, and again, regionally in conjunction with our public health officials. Um, these are the steps that are going to be incredibly important. We worked together as one region on all of the efforts that we did uh, over the last several weeks and months. It's going to be important that we work as a region to get our economy back in a safe manner uh, that allows us to do the things that we're going to need to do. More on that in the coming days uh, as well. Um, lastly, as I always do, I like to give an update on San Diegans that are, that are really helping out. Um, a great story today, and I particularly want to thank organizations in our LGBT community uh, the LGBT Center, and Pride for all of the work that they have been doing to really help deliver uh, critical services uh, remotely uh, to the community. Uh, one of uh, San Diego's oldest LGBT groups is the Imperial Court de San Diego. Um, they have not let their pandemic uh, slow down their volunteering and, and giving back. And I want to thank Nicole and Mikey, who are leaders of the Imperial Court, uh, who are really helping out families in a, in a couple of uh, very cool ways. Uh, first of all, as a comic book tribe that they started um, for really all of the kids that love comics books and encouraging kids to read uh, in this time. Uh, they really focused on children ages 6 to 12, and they have had hundreds of comic books 
uh, donated. They donate it. They get the names and address of the kids. They've been mailing them off themselves uh, and literally have distributed hundreds of comic books. Thank you, Nicole and Mikey. And lastly, the Imperial Court has also really stepped up with emergency food vouchers. Uh, vouchers donate to anyone who's struggling to help with groceries. Been doing $50 uh, gift certificates, vouchers from Ralph's, and the Imperial Court has given out nearly 22,000 food vouchers that have been distributed so far. It's a great example of San Diegans continuing to step up, continuing to help one another. Um, I will, before I answer media questions again, I want to thank all of our volunteers at the Convention Center, all of our providers. This is life-changing work that is happening in real time. You have our full support as a city and as a county, and uh, we're going to keep helping people. We will get through this together. We will get through this as one city. And with that, I will pause for any questions from members of the media. Hi, Mr. May. The first question comes from Melissa with Penn News. Melissa, go ahead. Hi, Mayor. Uh, quick question. Uh, many business owners, they've inquired about whether or not they were approved for the Small Business Relief Fund. What is the timeline for that? A great question. Uh, some of those checks have already been going out. In fact, as we mentioned uh, yesterday, uh, I think we've had over uh, 65 um, that have been uh, approved. More are coming. So if you, ha if you haven't heard, you will. Hang in there. Um, and also, I was, I was really, again, proud of yesterday's announcement because we had so much need uh, compared to what we were able to do, even though we started with $6 million. Thank you again to great companies that have stepped out now, uh, Qualcomm, GoFundMe, uh, others, uh, San Diego, of course, uh, CalCoast. Um, that whole new program through San Diego Grant Makers is really going to even add to that, to those dollars. And so we're really encouraging everybody for more information. Go to the City of San Diego's website, san diego.gov uh, slash small business relief. Next is Kasha with Kasha with Fox Five. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead, Kasha. We can hear you. Maybe we'll come back. Okay, great. Sorry for a little on you guys. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor Sarvin, of the new system for you all. Um, I did want to ask today, the Browns board voted to counsel the economic driver for our whole region. Um, so kind of a twofold question, but first I kind of wanted to ask your input on what kind of kind of an economic impact that legislation will have on go and our region. I'm having a little trouble hearing the question there, Kasha. Maybe you could try again. Okay, can you guys hear me okay now? I can. Okay, my apologies. So um, I did want to ask regarding the fair board, um, the fairgrounds board decision today to cancel the county fair until next summer yeah um that's obviously a big economic driver for the whole region so i have two questions regarding that but um first your take on what kind of ec economic impact do you think that will have on san diego and our region yeah well not, not only the fair great question thank you um yeah we're tourism uh, our economy the fair uh, all really helps to our, our bottom line um and so as we look at what these cancellations have meant it will have an impact obviously on our not only our city budget when it comes to you know the sales tax the particularly the TOT tax as folks come into San Diego whether it was for the fair uh, whether it was for other conventions so we'll have an impact uh, I'm going to talk a lot about that in tomorrow's briefing as I will be talking about the budget uh, where I'm going to really lay out where we are very openly transparently uh, the need to make some of the changes in our budget to help fill those gaps but also with a a strong focus on ensuring that our key city services, police, fire, trash, water, all of those are protected uh, as we move forward. These are very uncertain economic times. Um, it is going to be a significant reduction to our budget, but we're going to meet it head on. We're going to make the decisions we need to. And uh, my goal for particularly the rest of this year is to set us up for future success, making some of the tough decisions now that we need to make now and not putting those off. 
Next question. Thank you so much. If I could, um, sorry, I just have one more um, kind of a to piggyback off of that. If you can still hear me, it's Kasha from Fox. I can. Okay, wonderful. So um, I just wanted to ask again, this is in the future, you're doing the best to give us um, updates as they roll in. Um, but looking forward, what kind of an effect do you think um, the current state of I'm sorry, Kasha, you're, you're cutting out. Um, we'll try to get back to you in a second. Maybe we can go to the, we're having some difficulty, audio difficulties with you. And we can go to the next question. And the next question is from Lisa Hausat. Let go. You know, I can't keep it to one so I put in a bunch here. Um, so, first off, um, there are thousands of people that are living on the street in our town in our motel rooms. So, first off, what is the plan to outreach outside of the central city area, and how can homeless San Diegans who don't encounter that outreach get into shelter? Yeah. I also want to ask about you know, the continued quality life violations tied to homeless and Yep. Has issued a cease and desist letter to you and the police chief yesterday, Mayor. Do you expect to make any changes in enforcement? You're breaking up a little bit, Lisa, but I think I got the gist of, of both of your questions. Um, first and foremost, the, uh, the effort of regionalism. Um, it's something that's incredibly important. It's not just obviously a San Diego issue, but we want to ensure that the regional task force is working with our other cities and other parts of the county really to help those individuals that are on the street and unsheltered, as you rightfully point out. In fact, I had a phone call with uh, Chula Vista Mayor Mary Salas uh, today on just that, that point and that topic. And so the plans that are being made to not only do the significant steps that we are taking here within the city, but providing a diff uh, additional shelter opportunities to other parts of the county uh, is essential. Um, it's always been essential, but probably more essential now that we're going through COVID-19. And so um, for this system to continue to work, we have to provide more opportunities outside the city of San Diego, uh, and that has been an increasing focus of the regional task force with my full support. Uh, secondly, I think you had a question about uh, homeless outreach teams and enforcement in San Diego Police Department. Uh, our posture is very simple. We want to get people help. We want to get them off the street. Allowing encampments to grow in the, the sidewalks is an unsafe, unclean, unsanitary environment. We've seen what happens in San Diego if we allow that. That's why we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can with these gentlemen's help to provide that safe, secure, clean space uh, with the wraparound services that we want to get folks help. Um, that is the goal. That's how everything is approached with our, our police department, our homeless outreach team, is that we have an opportunity for you. We want you to use it. I think that's the right approach. And we're going to continue to use that approach, as I said, with one goal, how do we get people into an environment that's going to be much safer and much better, particularly during COVID-19, but even after we get past on the other side of it? That's why that approach is important. I'm also okay. hearing a lot of concerns from folks, especially given some of the news out of San Francisco um, about how uh, just people being at the convention center, obviously, uh, the density there, and I know uh, Supervisor Fletcher had announced today that there will be uh, larger testing there. Yeah. But how would you respond to folks concerned about health risk to the homeless population yeah. coming into the convention center? Look, we're, we're all concerned to make sure that we have a healthy environment. That's one of the reasons why the convention center was stood up to begin with. Um, in our bridge shelters, as I, I think you've, obviously you know because you've had the opportunity to, to be there, um, doing great life-changing work, but it was close quarters. There was bunk beds that weren't six feet away. Uh, the convention center allows us to have that physical space, that physical distancing, allows us to have all of the wraparound services all in one place and one location. And I think probably most importantly, when it was set up from the very beginning, it was set up in mind that says, how are we going to ensure that we have all of our health care professionals there, our county public health nurses, everybody who comes in is screened, 
everybody has their temperature checked once a day. I think the testing that we're going to be able to move forward with later this week is incredibly important because it dovetails into what we've said from the very beginning. We want to keep people safe. And if anybody tests positive, we have the ability to isolate, to put in hotel rooms. It's a whole system that has been created, again, with one goal. Let's make sure we're doing everything we can for this population that has some of the most vulnerable underlying health conditions. And so I really applaud everybody jumping in and working together, the city, the county, Lucky Duck Foundation, others. Um, that's how we help is by jumping in with everybody with both feet to make sure that we're getting the support and the testing that we need. Okay. We have one more. Very good. I think you have one more question. Yeah, it's easier for you to read it, or if Mayor can hear me, I can ask it. Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, just, wanted, just wanted to pay regarding kind of economic impact. What is your outlook, Mayor, on other big city events for the summer, like 4th of July celebrations and Comic-Con? Yeah, no, great question, uh, Kasha. And look, as we prepare for flattening the curve and why all of these actions have been so important, um, it'll help us get over that curve sooner rather than later. We're going to take all of, these, uh, all of these events on a month-by-month -month basis. That's just the reality um, because we want to make sure that we're keeping San Diego safe. And as we flatten that curve, as we potentially ease up on some of these restrictions, uh, we do it in a very safe uh, manner. Because the worst thing we could do is to give back the gains that we've all struggled so hard to achieve this last month and a half. So we want to continue that. We want to continue to put us in a better position. But we will do it with eyes wide open, working with our, as I said, our healthcare professionals, um, and to continue to make those decisions on public events on a on a week by week, a month by month basis with one overriding goal. We've got to make sure we're keeping San Diegans and our families safe and not allowing us to slide backwards. With that, if that thank concludes you. our questions, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today and look forward to talking to everybody tomorrow. Thank you.